get one take. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Inland, Evo 30. I'm Pastor Ruben, thank you for joining us today. We stream live on Facebook every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 9 a.m. If you're in the neighborhood, love to have you come by and join us at 5383 Martin Street in Harupa Valley. Good morning, Diana. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Today we are in the book of 2 Corinthians, and we'll be looking at chapter 9. Chapter 8 and 9 go together, and you might want to put that at the top of your Bible there. <clears throat> 8 and 9 deal with giving, or put generous giving. <clears throat> Those two chapters deal with giving. So let's go ahead and pray. Ask the Lord to, to bless us and encourage us today, and to be like our Savior, generous. Gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for your precious word. We're praying, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit that you would just bless us, minister to us, encourage us, and strengthen us, Lord, and that we would truly understand the very heart of our Savior Jesus who gave everything, everything for us, Lord. He was the most generous man on the earth, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that he has set such a great example for us to follow, Lord. May we, Lord, have our business in order, our finances, Lord, that we are not expending too much on material things that will pass away, Father, and not have much everlasting uh, weight, Lord, to it. And we're just praying now, Lord, that you would keep everyone safe as it's raining here in California, Lord, and that you would just water your, your earth and your creation, Father. And number our steps today, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning again for those of you who are just joining us. And good morning, good morning. Okay, so we're in 2 Corinthians, and we're in chapter 9. And Paul is continuing from chapter 8, talking about uh, giving, as we saw last Wednesday, that the church in Jerusalem had been going through some heartaches and hardships, and they needed resources because of a famine that was in the land. So Paul was going around to the churches and asking uh, for help. Which is, uh, which is interesting because there's nothing wrong with asking for help from other churches. I know as, as a non-denomination, we are part of Calvary Chapel, and there have been times where churches have asked for, for help from other churches because of various reasons. Maybe their pastor passed away, and they just want other churches to help out with some of the finances of the wife that was left behind without any insurance, without any resources just to get her, hopefully her back started on her feet in some way, or just the church itself is struggling, so they're asking for help in situations like pastors coming out teaching and trying to maintain the body that's there in that specific area because it's important. The church continue on, that the light continue to shine, and it just doesn't uh, distinguish. Distinguish or extinguish? It doesn't extinguish. So... Paul is asking the churches for help, and he goes on in chapter 9, verse 1, Now concerning the ministering to the saints. And of course, he's talking about the support and the giving there in Jerusalem specifically. He says, it is superfluous, I guess is the word. Super, what? Superfluous. Superfluous, I can't say that word. In the Greek, it's vehemently, or it is more than necessary. I should have put that in there instead. It's more than necessary for me to write to you. And so Paul is writing to them because he felt it necessary by the Holy Spirit that they understand these things. That's one of the questions that a lot of people have is, how do I tithe? How do I give? Who do I give to? How much do I give? You know, these are normal questions that you hear all the time. Uh, for instance, like, how much do I give? Well, you give 10%. The Bible's very clear in Malachi. But that's an Old Testament teaching. It still applies today. It's the same principle. God hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that's a principle that has not changed. God says 10% is a tithe. You go to the New Testament, Jesus told the religious leaders, what? You tithe of just the tiny little mints. And he says, and that's a good thing. You know, that's a good thing. But don't forget to add to it mercy and grace. Don't be so cruel to, to the people. Uh, so he said it was a good thing to tithe in the New Testament. So it's something that still is, is being used today, or God uses today, and that is 10%. Now, well, 10% of what? Is it our net? Is it our gross? It's 10% of what God allows you to use. So if you're working all week and you get your paycheck and it's, 
you know, $1,000 is what you actually can cash and put in the bank, then you give $100 of that to the Lord and you get $900. That's how that works. That's how much you give. Well, who do we give it to? Well, you give it to the church that you are attending. <clears throat> this is your place. This is where God has you. He wants you to maintain it. He wants you to help with it so that it can continue on to minister to your needs and your family's needs and then reach out to the community. That's who you support first. Um, sometimes uh, people think, well, I can give to another church. Why would you do that? And it just makes no sense. Well, they have a greater need than us. How do you know? Do you know all the ins and outs of each church? You know, you really don't. You support your church first. Uh, my mom, the other day we were at a store, and, and now you'll notice that when you buy things, they'll say, would you like to donate to the, you know, something, something? My mom goes, oh, no, thank you. I donate to my church, and I donate every month, and it's a big amount. And so, <laughs> and so she makes that very clear. And the, and the reason she does that is because I've done the same thing. I don't say all the other things. I just say, no, no, thank you. I already donate. And so she now says it. So... <clears throat> You donate to the place you go to. And then above that is, is your, your offerings, your love offerings. If you want to donate somewhere else, if you see a need in, in Africa or missions or, or whatever, a person, a family, then you give that from your heart as an offering, a wave offering unto the Lord, and you uh, glorify him through it. So there are some answered questions there. For I know your willingness, about which, verse 2, I boast of you to the Macedonians that Achaia was re ready to, a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up uh, the majority. So they were willing to get together enough resources for Paul to take to Jerusalem, and they had done it early. So Paul saw their eagerness and their willingness uh, without any hesitation. Yet I have sent the brethren, least our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that I that as I said, you may be ready, least if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your bountiful gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation." Our giving should never be done out of anger or grudgingly. It should be done because we love the Lord and we want to give out of a good heart. It should be a joy uh, to give. Now, this speaks of a couple of things. Um, one is that you prepare to give. Uh, they needed to prepare to give. So you have to set aside in your budget that 10% of that goes to the Lord. I don't know if you have a budget or not, uh, but we should all have some sort of budget. If you have a computer, you more than likely have Excel. Uh, you can just go on Excel and you can put all of your expenditures on there. Just list them. And I would do that. And I would take a couple of months. Every time you pay a bill, check your Excel. Make sure it's on there. And then in the next box, because they're divided in boxes, you put the amount that you put. Uh, and so now you have a little budget of what it costs for every one of those things. I have a list like that for myself and also for the church. And so I list it all. And then what you do is you take all those numbers, you go to the box, and you add them together, and you have a total. And Excel will do that for you. So now you have a total at the bottom, and it does it automatically. So every month you go in there, and you say your, your phone bill is $30, next month it's $35. You can change it, and it will add it up for you. And it tells you what your <clears throat> budget will be. <clears throat> so you know now I have to budget, say, $1,000 for my home, just my home for things there, not food, not anything else, not insurance, not cars, you know, things like that, and you total it up. So you have an idea. Then you put another box with your wages. You put your amount there, and then you total that there, and you might have your wages, your wife wages. Maybe you rent a room. You put those wages. Maybe uh, there's other wages that you get, you know, and you put them there, and you add it up, and now you have your expenditures, your wages, and you do a little calculation. You do a minus, an equal, and that's what you have at the end of the month. And so it should equal zero, which would mean you're right on budget, or it should be in the positive, that you have extra every month. If it's in the negative, then you need to cut back. You need to cut back. And in that list, you have your 
tithing, 10%. And you can tell by your wages what that will be, and you put that amount in there, and that's consistent. And that's how you budget. And you look at that budget, and you try not to go over that budget every month. It's hard in the beginning because you don't know what you're budgeting, so, so um, you just spend you're just spending, you get a credit card, you take cash, whatever, and you just spend, and then when you look at the end of the month, you go, where did my money go? Well, it all went there, or, the, or here. And so you have to budget, and when you get used to that, then you get used to spending, and you spend accurately. And God will begin to bless you too, and you'll see that, that number in the end start to be more in the positive than not, because you're not wastefully spending on things. What is wastefully spending? It's amazing how you can wastefully spend. You go to the store, you see a candy bar. Reese's Pieces now cost you almost three bucks. That's ridiculous how much things are costing. And it's going to get worse, guys, because of the gas prices and so forth. So you go to lunch, $9. You know, two people, that's $25 for lunch alone. You do that every day. You know, you multiply 25 times 10. That's $250 a month. That's just 10 times out of the week, out of the month, if you go out. So we waste a lot. You're going... Uh, to a store, you see water, you buy a bottled water, $2 instead of carrying water with you, and it costs you less than 25 cents. So these are the things that you have to look at. So it's a matter of being prepared and ready to give. And that's what Paul's saying. I'm sending someone to you so that you're prepared. When we're ready, you give it. That's what we do every week. And so every week, you should be giving to the church or every bi-weekly, or if you get paid every month, then you do it every month. But whenever you're paid, you, you also uh, make sure you give your tithes up to the Lord. And he goes on in verse 6. Oh, the second thing is, is that, you know, it's not obligation. You do it from your heart because you know it's the right thing to do, first of all. God has asked you to do it. It's the right thing to do. I was just reading something I'm going to share on Mother's Day, and I thought it was profound, this guy's observation of the text. He says, sometimes we forget about Adam and Eve and how good they had it. They had the perfect parents in every way, and yet they sinned. And this is an observation I never realized, but they had, um, I guess in a sense, a protection of sin because they were the first man and woman. Like, they couldn't commit adultery. They were the only two there. There were a lot of things they couldn't do because there wasn't those things there. And yet, they sinned. They sinned themselves. So uh, our hearts are very sinful. Um, and we have it a little harder because all these temptations that are around us uh, are, are there. So when we give, we give not out of uh, anger, grudgingly, uh, but we give because God has asked us to give, because it's the right thing to do, and because we want to, or we get to. It's another way of saying it, not because we have to. When you say, I have to give, your heart's wrong. It's wrong. You, say, you should say, I get to give and support God's work. Verse 6, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Is that true? Is what Paul's saying there true, or is he just writing words? Of course it's true. It's written right here in the Bible. So this is a principle that we can believe in. Now this takes a matter of faith. If you sow sparingly, then you're gonna reap sparingly. So picture a field, and you want a good crop. So you take corn seeds, and you just throw 10 out there. Well, how many stalks of corn are you gonna get? Five, Five maybe, right? Because half of them are gonna die. But that's sowing sparingly and reaping sparingly. But let's say you have faith, I'm gonna, psh, let me throw a million out there. How many are you going to get? 500,000 stocks of corn now. And now you're sowing bountifully, reaping bountifully. So there's a principle there, and this principle is true, and you can believe it. Now the problem is, is that when we see our paycheck and then we go to give our money, and God's like this, and you're holding on to it, you know? You're like, I don't know if I can believe it. I'm not sure if I can trust you, God. And, and that's a lack of faith. So we need to be able to say, Lord, you promise that if I sow bountifully, you're going to bless me bountifully. And he does, because Paul said he does. And this is a principle that takes place. If it's true in nature, it's true in the spiritual realm too. And he says in verse 7, uh, So let each one, as he purpose in his heart, not, to, uh, not grudgingly, 
or of necessity, for God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Now, he's not talking about tithing here, so let's first get that understood. This is the offerings, because this is an offering to Jerusalem. This isn't tithing here. Um, and so when you give your offerings, you're also to give it, not grudgingly, but cheerfully. And the word cheerful there, which is interesting, the word there really means uh, hilariously, joyfully. Uh, think about hilariously. I mean, it, it's like, it's hilarious that you can actually give and God gets to use it. It's an amazing thing. And God is able to make all, how much? All grace abound towards you. So same principle. If you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully because it's God by his grace. It's not because of your giving. It's because of his grace that he abounds towards you that you always have all sufficiency in all things. Not just in some things, but in all things. Not just in money, but in all things. I find that we might not necessarily um, have more money, but things don't break down as much as they do. You know, our washer, I think, that we have, we've had it for a long time. Our van. You know, we've done maintenance on our van. It's a 1999. And that thing still runs good. And it sits in our home, and we use it for our traveling to pick up Home Depot stuff, you know, or when I got to take a load of this or that, and it's a nice little van. Have no issues with it at all. It's 20 years old. How many of you know of vehicles that last 20 years? Except Patty, because she's a bountiful giver. She gives graciously. So, so God will make things last at times, you know? And now that van gets to be used by others. We get to use it as a blessing, so we're sowing even more bountifully in the lives of other people. They get to uh, use that. And so I'm expecting all my cars to last that long. Uh, we buy cars until they run into the dirt, you know, and they rust and they disintegrate. But that thing's going to run and it's going to help people. It's not worth anything. I can't get my, probably a couple of thousand dollars for it. You know, it doesn't look very beautiful, but it runs really well. It's pretty fast, two, four, four cylinder. Yeah, not bad at all. So God has a way of doing that because we're giving uh, to him and tithing. So he goes on. The God who gives uh, through his grace all things, all things may have an abundance for every good work. And again, every good work again. So <clears throat> when he does give back, it's because he wants you to do good works with it. Like I said, with the band, we actually let others uh, in the body of Christ use it so that they can be blessed by it. So he's blessed us with a healthy band. And we let other people use it so that they can take care of their business. And that's what he expects of us. It is, as it is written, he has uh, dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. So this is a principle in Psalms 112 uh, of the very heart of God, that he is a God that disperses abroad. He gives everywhere. He gives to the poor, uh, and his righteousness remains forever. Now, verse 10. May he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberty which causes thanksgiving through us to God. So Paul here in a sense is, is, is saying a little prayer here that, that when God who first supplies you the seed, right? Because our seed comes from God anyway. The only reason you have a job is because God has given it to you. Or the strength to work is because God has given you. If you're a business owner, you have that job because God has given it to you and you have a responsibility to take that seed and plant it for the glory of God. Um, this is pretty neat because this is pretty clear again and, he, and he's really driving that point that if you're a giver, God's going to bless you. He's just going to bless you. He's going to bless you abundantly. But if you don't give... You have to ask yourself, why are my vehicles broken? Why are these not working? Why am I not, why do I not have a job? Because you consume it all on yourself and you're not a giver. We have to be givers like Jesus. Jesus was generous and he was a generous giver. I remember when this topic came up with uh, uh, Dr. Justin Alfred uh, and we were talking about this and we looked at it in the Greek and um, his perspective is that when we tithe, God 
accurately, unequivocally, and definitely gives and outgives us in the Greek. It's like abundantly, you can depend on it. That's how faithful he is. And then he goes on to share some, some stories about how he, because of his faithfulness and tithing, that God has always provided for them, you know, through their whole life. So, verse 11, while you are enriched in everything, for all liberty, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also in abounding through many thanksgivings to God. So you're, you're supporting and giving to others does two things. It brings thanksgiving to their heart and hope, and it also then uh, brings a deeper relationship with God because God has supplied their needs. That's two good, wonderful things that it does. Well, through the proof in this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberty or for your liberal sharing with them and all men and by their prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thank be to God for his indescribable gift. Now, what is his indescribable gift? Money? Reaping abundantly? No, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is his indescribable gift. <clears throat> Why does he end with Jesus Christ? Because that's the gospel message. See, here's the gospel message is that we're sinners. We are sinners. That's what the Bible says. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's not one righteous, no, not one. The Bible says if you break one part of the law, you've broken the whole law. So I'm not just talking about adultery. I'm not talking about fornication. I'm not talking about homosexuality. If you have stolen something, and every one of us has stolen something from someone, it doesn't belong to you, but you stole it. You just broke God's law. You're guilty. And when you stand before a judge... He will find you guilty, and then there's a fine or a sentence that will come because you will have a judgment pronounced on you. So God tells us that we're all sinners. There's not one person that's righteous, not one. That's why we shouldn't be judging one another so harshly because we're just as guilty as the next person. But God sends his indescribable gift to take our place. That's the gospel message. So Jesus comes and he goes to the cross instead of us going to the cross and he dies in our place when it should have been us on that cross. And if we put our faith in him and believe that he resurrected from the dead, the Bible says we shall be saved. If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. We shall be born again. The word saved means believe, Faith, trust, cling to. It means you become a new creature. You cannot go to heaven unless you're born again. That means your mindset changes. It changes. You begin to have a desire to do what God has commanded you to do. So in this case, in the context today of giving, when you are born again, the Holy Spirit is going to constantly be telling you to give, to give, to give. And you're going to have to make a choice. You might give that day and feel, okay, good, I gave. I feel a little better. And then all of a sudden it's like, what about next week? And, and now what about being consistent? And the Holy Spirit won't let you down until he gets you to submit to the obedience to God, that you are to be a generous giver. That's how it works. You become born again. And it's true of everything else. If you do lie then the Holy Spirit will begin to convict you of those lies. If you do have homosexual tendencies and you're calling yourself a Christian, you know, then you're going to stop having those tendencies because you know that that goes contrary to God's word. Because you're born again, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Peter says you must repent. And the word repent means turn from your sins. It means make a 180 degree turn. In the opposite direction so you were walking this way 
And now you're walking the opposite way. You were walking in evil, now you're walking in, in goodness. You were walking in darkness, now you're walking in light. You weren't going to church, now you're going to church. And you're committed to church. And you're committed to the fellowship and support of that church because you're no longer walking for yourself. Because everyone has a church, right? It could be the church that God has created or it can be your church that you've created. And we see that. You go down the street here and there's a church on Etiwanda and it's the church of the marijuana people. They've created their own God and their God smokes marijuana. And they can sit around all day smoking marijuana. That's how you create your own God. Well, we create our own spiritual church. No, this is how I like to go to church. I go to church. We had somebody here for sunrise service, and they said, we go to church on Easter only. And we were trying to get them to come and show, oh, no, no, we already go to church once a year, and that's all we're doing. Once a year we go to church. That's how they go to church. That's the church that they have created. And they feel good about that. Is that the church that God has created? No, not at all. In Hebrews 10, 9, he says very clearly, do not forsake the assembly of one another, as some have done. We need to be in church as much as possible, as much as possible. So we can create our own church, you know, and our own church, we don't really tithe because we just keep the money for ourselves. <laughs> in our church, own church, we don't deal with people outside of our church. We only deal with our family. And that's enough. We don't want to deal with anybody outsiders coming in and being a part of it, you know. We're in God's church. It's totally the opposite. So unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Something to think about. And that's pretty simple to remedy. That's just give your life to the Lord. Surrender everything to Him. Let Him be your God. Read His word and be obedient as He ministers to you. <sighs> Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for that indescribable gift, Jesus Christ. Lord, he is the one that desires to embrace us, to love us, to care for us, to be there for us, Lord. He is the one that gives us life itself, that has provided the seeds for us to sow, Lord. It all comes from him because he loves us, Lord. Such a gift that comes from our Father in heaven, his own son. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for giving us everything. Thank you for being generous to us, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. And we don't even know what love is without looking at your love. And may we love like you, Lord. May we be generous like you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you have any prayers, please post them or private message me, and we will be praying for you uh, this morning. If you have no church to go to or you have not been going to church, I encourage you to get back to church. Uh, we love you. All we want to do is see you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We preach the word and the word only here. You're going to get it. Uh, and so um, we're hoping that you'll make a choice to join us here. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend.